the Christmas Eve floor. It's Christmas Eve, the year is 2022. There's no baking or cooking for me to do this year, so it's been a slow season for me. I usually bake goods for my neighbors and family. I could have, but I didn't. Last year I had so much stress I actually blacked out. I'm sure the clonopin and the weed didn't help. Normally this night belongs to Dora, the best host ever. A large group of us together on this once very busy holiday would come together and drink and feast. Tamales, of course, they'll never be gone from this holiday. I arrive at my sister's and I will take my nephew Benton for a walk, go get some energy out and enjoy the Christmas decorations. If we pass any roses, Benton will want to smell them all. This is one of the many reasons why I love him so much. I wish I could explain to him what this holiday once meant to the family. It was always Dora. Dora's been gone for two years now, so even if I could start, how do I fill in the gaps? Dora was my cousin and the forever host of Christmas Eve. She was the glue that kept us together. Now that she's gone, it feels like being in darkness. This year, I made my own holiday party to remember all the good parts that Dora would bring to the holiday. My party was not on Christmas Eve, of course. I was the person who was constantly cooking and running around and finishing odds and ends to make the night perfect. How does he do it, they'll think. Also, I have a nice mud mask on my face to have my face bright and clean. I am younger and in a group that is constantly texting to the guests questions. When and what to bring, they'll inquire. The party's at six, you don't need to bring anything. Yes, please don't bring anything. Yes, it's at six. No, please don't come early. I'll be cooking. No, I don't need help with the cooking. I started at 4 a.m. I do a long prep for food. That is what makes the difference of stress cooking and baking only to be fit into a few hell-like hours. The vegetables are being marinated and the cookie dough is made. Get now to the holiday. It gets dark very early and Benton and I are starting to see Christmas lights as the sun fades out. I'll playfully throw him in the air and when I have him back in my arms, he says, Uncle Andrew, do it again, do it again, do it again. We head back to my sister's and take our spots at the table, sitting with my family at a table that is full of candlelight and love for each other. My younger nephew, Bodie, missed a nap and now he wants it. My sister had my back and I got a pass on not attending church. She says, okay, you guys are going to church and Andrew's staying with me. He'll help me with Bodie. I spent the few hours bonding with my sister and I learned how to communicate with her and how to manage the new things in life we go through. And it was a miracle, a Christmas miracle, and it was lovely. My sister is still rotating Christmas films to fill the silence. I sit at the bar and will be there if she needs to talk or needs help. This being alone in the kitchen is something we both share. As time passes us by and our party days are in the past, facing real life and fighting about it in our heads. Yet at times a simple book or a song will return the hope back to us or to make us not feel so alone when we're faced with very big issues. I was just about to say something that I have been struggling with. Then at that moment, our church attending family comes on in. Then in a few short moments, we change the dinner table to a dessert table, which means change the placemats, serve the pie with a side of ice cream and special candles that are meant just for dessert. We both have been striving to be the best toast ever. We all have dessert and then I leave my love that is my family and the love I have for Long Beach. My evening is already over, a strong high I have from keeping a clonopin under my tongue. I'm also drinking strong coffee to keep me awake to enjoy the warm tingle that is the clonopin buzz. I do have one more thing to do. I'm watching my friend's dog. I will load my dog up in the car so they can play together. I go to my friend's empty house in the clean LED light in my friend's place, I feel so impure or feel I have brought a gray cloud with me. It's now 7.23 p.m. Even though Dora is gone, the family still celebrates. 
and will do all the special things. With my moods that can swallow me whole, I decided not to go and maybe burn a few bridges along the way. In the kitchen, I stand right in the center, white. I feel pulled by an energy. I am in a place where I feel I thrive, here in a kitchen, food being so important to both cultures that dwell in me. Hungarian butter-filled cookies and how to feed a large family with the soup that has one fish and an obscene amount of cabbage. A Mexican meatball has been something I still have not made with success. I have my Grandma Cortez's recipe for carrot cake and I can eat the whole thing day in, day out. It's paradise on a fork. Grandma Cortez did not know much about American cooking and she never did because she would modify a recipe, mostly because she had 13 people to serve. To all the women who came before me and made the idea of being in the kitchen not to be a slave, but an angel and independent. When I am creating in the kitchen, I have to pipe music into my ears. When I'm alone, I fill the house with warmth and music that will keep my energy up. In this year of growing, I have tripled the amount of recipes I know by heart. Then all of a sudden I'm on overload, falling to my knees that registers no pain on impact. I remember when I would feel myself fall asleep when I was younger, and at times I will play with the same imagery and visit in my life today. When I want to feel safe and in control and in my own protection, my bed and the floor rise from one side, my bed gracefully dropping onto a flat surface, then the floor will erect from the other direction, over and over. Then before I know it, I'm flying into a world that is all my own. In this empty kitchen, I can do whatever I want. As I get more comfortable into a seated position, my friend's dog will come and sit in my lap. I am resting against the dishwasher and as I am floating in and out of reality, I see my dog whose eyes are glued to the window behind me. I feel panic rise from my toes and it shoots to my brain. What could it be? I do not look. If I look and see something, I'll be terrified. However, if I do look and see nothing, that can make the mind spin out even harder. I call to my dog to come and play with my friend's dog. You guys get out of my space, I think, for there's far too much on my mind right now. The door to the backyard is wide open. I move from sitting into laying on my back. My legs lie on top of each other and my arms are spread ready for a line to be traced on where my body has given up and I am no longer there. Before a man who has no idea who I am would strip me from the floor like roadkill. If I were to die now, die in this kitchen, my eyes just wish to see peace. I look to my right and see a child lock for a cabinet just slightly over my head. My friend has an angel of a daughter, but love is not registering in my brain right now. I stare and think, in the clean kitchen, in all of this surgical white space, my eyes locked to the baby proof item. Would I be okay with this being the last thing I see? If you had a moment in the plan of when you wish to part, what would you do? Burn a candle, make a very special and familiar meal to feel complete, <clears throat> have a cocktail that is taking you on fun trips and will hold your hand as you leave, or music on my Spotify has at least a thousand of my all-time favorites, yet who will walk me through the final door? Would it be someone new I have been listening to or keep it to some basics that I wanted, that I was raised on? As I get darker and darker inside my head, the dogs are rushing up to me and covering me with kisses. So much work to do with myself and my mind. Also, tomorrow's Christmas day. Let's hold on to that. Then shortly after, it will be a new year. There have been great things to come with this year. With these dogs covering me with kisses and yearning to play, I rip myself off the floor. I will eventually leave this earth at some point. We all will, yet not tonight. I love you so much, Dora, yet our reunion will not be tonight. But I'm thinking of you. I am also feeling the blessings I have right now. There is no way I can quit tonight. I will walk away from that cold Christmas Eve floor. I'll walk out and light a cigarette, have my coffee, and laugh as I watch the dogs play.